Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to take a look at an incredibly useful command, which is Shadows Highlights. It works well because it allows you to adjust those areas independently. A lot of times in a picture, you'll have underexposed or overexposed areas, and this command gets the job done without a lot of work on your part. Let's see how it works. Now, I've opened up a couple of pictures here, and if you want, you can actually download these from creativecow.net as well to follow along. Let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to choose Image, Adjustments, Shadows, Highlights. Now, normally, it's going to look like this, and you're going to have two sliders. One slider for shadows, one for highlights. You'll see as we adjust the shadows slider over that those areas get brighter. That works out pretty well, but you also have the highlight slider, which allows you to knock down overexposed areas and tone them down a bit. Now, this works well, but you're all professionals, so you might as well really harness the full power of the tool. To do that, click the Show More Options. Now, some of you are going to immediately hit Cancel because you're going to be intimidated by all the sliders. Don't worry. If you can handle programs like After Effects, you can easily handle this command. Here we have it. First category is Shadows. So, the amount of correction, as well as what is a shadow, 0 means nothing's a shadow, while 100 means treat everything as a shadow. So we can really control the width of what's a shadow. And radius, which gives a little bit of fall off. So we could say go after more areas and treat them as shadows. So as we brighten, more of the image brightens. And then we could tone down just the brightest areas, but say don't go after so much, just the bright highlights of the metal and then put a little bit of color correction back in so the washed out areas hold up. Before, after. Now there's no substitute for shooting a photo right, but a lot of times you're going to have to work with images that you didn't shoot. Or maybe the lighting conditions were just challenging and it was a perfect shot other than it was poorly lit. So you can use this command to have a little more flexibility. Now earlier in our show we talked about smart objects a couple of weeks back. Smart Objects also work with the Shadow Highlights command. If you right click on the layer and convert it to a Smart Object, you now could use Smart Filters. Some of you are saying the Smart Objects, that's great, and I understand Smart Filters, but what does Shadow Highlights have to do with Filters? It doesn't appear in the Filters menu. Well, you're right, but the Shadows Highlight Adjustment actually is a filter. While you'll find it in the Image menu, it actually uses a filter engine. So You'll see it there, and it's not grayed out. This is a little loophole, so if you make the layer a smart object, you can use shadow highlights non-destructively. Let's go ahead and apply that, and we're going to say, you know, go after those shadows, pop them up a bit, but just the darkest area here. I want to go after the bike, not the brick wall. So as I lift that up there, you'll see that it gets brighter, toggle that off and on, and that's working well. Go ahead and tone down some of the brightest highlights there, but only go after the brightest areas, like the highlights in the middle. Put a little color correction in, a little contrast. There it is, before, after, and click OK, and you see it's fixed. The other benefit of it being a smart object is that the smart filter has a mask. So you could paint right on this mask here if you wanted to obscure areas. I can simply say, you know, let's take the polygonal lasso tool here, and select this area of the wall, make an active selection, and we could fill that with black, option delete or alt delete, and notice that that area is not being affected at all by the shadow highlights command. So makes it really, really flexible. Now let's try this on one more set of images. I want to show it to you over in a raw file. Now, many of you use raw files because this is what the cameras will shoot these days. Instead of shooting JPEG, take advantage of the higher quality that the cameras offer by shooting in their native or raw formats. When you choose this, you have a much wider range of exposure available within the file. And within the camera raw dialog, you do have adjustments for shadows and highlights. Let's see how. I'll choose File Open and point ourselves at a couple of raw files here. Here we go. And we'll open both of these up and bring them in. 
Now, these have loaded in, and you see we have two pictures. Let's start with the one that's the darkest. And we could choose an auto exposure if we want, and it'll do a pretty good job. It boosted the exposure, but let's back that off a bit, and instead go after shadows and highlights independently. So, within the Camera Raw dialog box here, we have lots of options, and shadow highlights is not quite as intuitive, but you do have control within many of the parameters. Sure, we can go ahead here and adjust exposure, and you actually have a recovery slider, which does a nice job of pulling down the highlights and clamping them. That works well. We could put a little bit of fill in if we need to, and those are all behaving very similar to shadows and highlights. If we do go on over to the next tab of the tone curve, you will see some controls for shadows and highlights as well. So we can go ahead here and go after just the highlights in the image. There they're getting brighter. Here we're pulling them down a bit. And then let's lift the shadows just a little bit, and you see that works well. We can also go after the dark areas and take a more global adjustment. And with a gentle adjustment there, there we go. That works very well. I'll jump on back to the original here, and we'll just put a little bit of vibrance back in to fill in that color, boost the saturation as needed, and when happy, click Open Image, and it will send it on in to Photoshop. Now, shadows and highlights, very useful. And if you know where to look for them, you can also find them in the raw dialog box. What you want to do is take advantage of these types of commands because it makes it easier to isolate the problems. Oftentimes, you're going to have areas that are both too bright and too dark within the same shot. By using this technology, you can go after those and fix them. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Photoshop for Video. My name is Rich Harrington. I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where you can interact with us over in the Photoshop forum. And feel free to post some ideas for future shows. Thanks again.